Well, it's 12.57 in the morning, and we have what appears to be a white night in Illinois. It was snowing quite a bit. It's so bright it feels like it's dawn rising. It's never been this bright. And what's weird is that it's brighter in the direction of where the sun would rise, as if there's an early sun coming, or some strange light just beyond the horizon. And looking back at the garden, could see how well it's handling a couple inches of snow. And buried under that is the uh, winter wheat and the dinosaur kale. The snow is insulating, so I'm inclined to leave it alone. The uh, dinosaur kale is planted last year before spring planted inside and then transplanted outside and it's going to grow for another year and get even bigger it's already a couple feet tall and the biggest one anyway the uh, smallest ones are only smaller because they got uh, affected by insects early on before we had a chance to address the problem with um, beneficial insects and trace minerals the uh, winter wheat was planted uh, in the, hmm, I believe it was early October, yes, um, near the beginning of autumn anyway, no, no, it was early September is when I planted it, yeah. So anyway, um, the idea with the winter wheat is you plant it in early autumn and it grows and then it goes in a dormancy in winter. Even if I don't end up harvesting it as a wheat, it actually is really good for establishing a new garden bed because the roots will bind the soil together. It's just so beautiful out. And I'm really glad for this snow for many reasons. For one, Without enough snow, we could look forward to very hot summers. And that's partly because, well, not enough snow in the mountains. You don't get enough water in the rivers and everything kind of goes from there. But the other reason is that next month, I need to finish working on this garden. See, right there is the bed I pretty much dug out already, which is actually just going to be level with the sidewalk and I'm going to have uh, that be a white uh, clover bed. A nice thick place for any excess water to run into and be absorbed quickly. And also a level surface to walk on and sit on. And then back into this area here I need to put in a couple of tons of gravel along there and there. And that's going to be brought up to their level there. And I have to put in another bit of wood here uh, to really establish this growing bed. And that's about 10 foot long. That was really difficult to do last year with only, uh, yeah. But it's very nice to be able to have a garden going. 
the uh, soil here is settled, but that's because it was a fresh constructed garden bed. And in a way, that's kind of a good thing. I mean, normally with square foot gardening, you only have like six inches of soil and that's it. With this, we've got a few feet of drainage gravel. We've got clay soil and we've got good soil mixed into the clay soil and then six inches of topsoil on top. Then after it settles, you put another six to eight inches on top of that, blending it in, and you end up with a couple of feet of healthy roots. And that's one of the reasons why I had 13 to 16 foot tomato plants last year, getting a couple hundred tomatoes in just the area where the wheat is growing now. And that was just the first year growing. Using a combination of methods, you can get amazing results in the smallest of areas. And to really emphasize just how big of a difference it is, this area here, before I built the little structure, looked exactly like that, with weeds like that just entangling in the area. It makes a big difference. And in this bed here, that's level with the sidewalk, and I actually pulled that back from the sidewalk a bit because that's actually where the gas line is. Um, I made sure that this wall here is actually a few feet below the surface anyway, so if they had to dig, it wouldn't disrupt anything structurally. But um, I already have uh, about a dozen tulip bulbs there, but I'm planning on getting a few dozen more ordered so that way I can um, basically have tulips growing and blooming all the times of the year. Um, there's enough room in here for about a hundred tulips to bloom all packed together so if I just get a one more dozen of each kind they'll thicken out and you know have about 12 dozen. Mm, yeah total and then about a dozen blooming every time of the year. It's uh, gonna be nice when I can expand the garden, but for right now, I can't really do anything else with the yard. I have some major landscaping I need to do, but at least I can take steps towards self-sufficiency. Of course, um, with my irrigation system, I had to disconnect all the little tubings because you don't want that freezing and being damaged. But the main um, pipes, those main tubes can just leave out there as long as you open up the ends so there's no pressure to build up in there. But anyway, that's an update on the garden. A little after one in the morning now. Under the light of not just a light from there, but a white night. Amazing. So oh, in case you're wondering, that black, when I put the boards in, I actually put that um, landscaping fabric, um, wrapped it around, and actually had it hanging down below the ground level because there are roots going to be on both sides. So I didn't just want to put landscaping fabric on this side. I wanted to keep roots from that side from poking through. So it's looping around there, but it's actually going down to the very bottom. When I put the dirt in here, there's going to be another layer directly on the face of that put into it. But I made sure to put that in first because that's layered um, directly behind there in the force of it is holding it all together.
the uh, plan for spring. That's going to be a kale bed again. And that's going to be allowed to become a full winter wheat. It's going to be allowed to grow and we'll harvest it in the beginning of summer. And then I'm planning on putting a, a Three Sisters garden there, which will be corn, squash, and uh, bean. And uh, this up here is going to be a broccoli bed and a lettuce bed and um, maybe some other greens. Right there, that's actually a broccoli plant that is still got some green on it, but I think it's actually finally dead. It's actually been surviving through most of the winter. It's just finally got cold enough for long enough to actually kill it. But um, I've been leaving it up for another reason. I was allowing the flowers to produce seeds. Now I'm not really having the time to really go through the seeds there, so my plan is I'm going to break that down and mix it with the soil and plant fresh sprouts and put them in the ground. And any extra seeds that grow will grow. And then when I have more time, I'm going to do some more research on how to properly save seeds from broccoli. I know that it takes a long time to dry out. And uh, I already have inside all of the little seedlings ready to go in the ground. I've actually got some tomato plants already more than a foot tall. And that I planted them last summer, actually. There's actually one cutting that's still alive from the transplanting. Most of the cuttings I made of the original last generation plants died and I think it's because I made the cuttings way too late and didn't establish them properly. But it's a learning experience.